Hey campers, it's me, your camp counselor, Andre, and today we're diving into a movie that is, I, it may just be one of the greatest movies of all time, and that is the horror flick Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp, it's just such a film that you just need to see to believe that any of this could even happen. So the movie starts the best way a movie like this can start. That's with the dedication to the filmmaker's mother. A mother who, by all terms and purposes, is a doer. If there is a movie that really illustrates being a doer more than anything, it's this movie. The movie starts with there's these two kids and their father and they're swimming in a lake. Daddy, tell me to leave me alone. Peter started it. I did not, you liar. The two did not. All right, let's settle down and stop fighting. And while that is happening, there's also these kids who are on a boat jet skiing. And for some reason, it's the greatest jet ski experience I've ever seen in my life. So while this girl is screaming at the people in the boat to stop because they're right about to hit our characters. run into the family. And the person jet skiing is the only person who gives really an appropriate reaction to this. Oh my god! Somebody help the people! We go eight years into the future, and this is where the movie starts going cuckoo bananas. Now, it already had because we really know nothing about these characters, and the person who died, as you see, just floats away like it's just the thing to do. But we are now eight years later, and we see that the daughter, Angela, has survived. And she's now living with her obnoxious auntie. Richard Angela! Look what I did. I packed you and your cousin some goodies for the ride up to camp. Wasn't that nice of me, hmm? I'm not sure where this lady went to acting school, but I need to go there because obviously that is why I have not made it in Hollywood. That scene alone. She lives with her cousin, Ricky, and they're gonna go to sleepaway camp. Now, Ricky goes to sleepaway camp every year, and you as the viewer might ask yourself, well, why has Angela never gone? I don't know, but they go together, and as soon as they get there, we are met with the creepiest camp counselors as well as the kitchen staff who say some of the weirdest things. Look at all that young, fresh chicken. Where I come from, we call them baldies. Makes your mouth water, don't it? Hardy, they are too young to even understand what's on your mind. Then, good buddy. There ain't no such thing as being too young. You're just too old. <laughs> now, before we get more into this insane movie, something I always want to talk about is the outfit choices in this movie. I know it was the 80s, but everyone wears by far the shortest shorts they could possibly find on set that day. And the other thing is that I couldn't even tell if these camp counselors were like 46 or in their early teens. They looked 46. So they get to camp, everyone's obsessed with Judy's boobs, and Judy, who is our arch villain of the movie, I mean, I know there is, spoiler alert, a killer on the loose, but if anybody should be killed or anything, it's Judy, because Judy, Judy's a little mean. Angela will not talk, and Angela not talking is something that for whatever reason pisses off every single person at this camp. What do you think? 
But what's her problem anyway? She don't eat, she don't talk, she don't do anything. Why don't you leave her alone? She's just quiet. Like, enrages them. And so they toss her to the creepy dude. And the creepy dude takes her into the closet. And this scene happens. You sure are a sweet looking little cupcake, Angela. I got something you're gonna like real good. Hey, what are you doing? Keep your mouth shut, Amy. You didn't see nothing. Got it, nothing. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want. Now get the hell out. Thanks, what up? What was that all about? Because I scared him. Now we get to a scene where the creepy dude is in the kitchen and he's stirring the water, which is comically large for whatever reason. And so as soon as the killer comes in and we are shown this killer view from like a point of view. burning for like three hours right and he's just been screaming he's like ah they exit this place and and, and just i need to show you this scene look how many <laughs> look how many of these fly traps they have in this one shot alone i'm afraid i don't carry a sedative strong enough to mask the kind of agony he's in right now what about them don't worry i'll take care of them now, kids are all angry at each other. The person has died. No one, no one at the camp seems to care. And so we then get taken into probably the best part and the most necessary part for this movie to become whole. And that is the 10 minute baseball scene where we legitimately watch these people play baseball. And that's it. Come on, Ricky, babe, save me my up. Hey, big man. You and your boys want to place a little wager while the game is still close? What do you have in mind, asswipe? Buck a man, asshole. That's a little steep. Make it five. You got it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Next guy. Next guy. Come on. All right. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Make yourself useful and bring me home, huh? This little shit will be lucky to make content. No bad. No bad. Come on, Paul. Should have brought my rabbit's foot. <laughs> It has nothing else to do with the movie. We're just watching some kids play baseball for 10 minutes. As the movie progresses, the killer is going around the camp and killing people. This all comes down to us meeting Paul, and Paul is one of Ricky's best friends, and he is super attracted to Angela. And Angela herself is also attracted to him, and so they begin to fall in like. And Angela finally starts talking. Well, good night, Angela. Good night. And now that he's the only one that she will talk to, well, you know Judy, she got an attitude. Hey, how come Angela gets to talk to the boys all day and we have to play volleyball? What's she, special? I just also want to point out this one scene here. I, these about with movies like this. I just I love that the director is so passionate about their characters making wise choices. So I just have to point out that in this scene, his hair looks this way, but then it flashes to him again, and now his hair is completely wet and drenched and looks a different way. But when it flashes back to him, we are back to the same hair we started with. Look. I don't know what the character did in between takes, but they included it in, and that is an artistic choice, in my opinion. Judy continues to be a bitch, and Angela continues to be angry. I bet you don't even have your period. That's enough, Judy. Angela's allowed to shower in the morning or any other time she wants to. Yeah. She takes showers when no one can see. She has no hair down below. Judy, she's a real carpenter's dream. The lad is a board and needs a screw. That's enough! Fuck off! One of the boys goes in, and I quote, takes a wicked dump. Hey, we got a game against the counselors. You gonna play? Sure. We gotta take a wicked dump first. I'll see you guys down there, all right? And he is met to the most 
hilarious demise. What the hell are you doing? Hey, get that thing out of here! Come on, get it out! We're starting to get some more lore and get into the story and so we have this like black box scene where we see these two gay lovers and we find out that the dad had a gay lover. And we find that out, I'm not sure for what reason, but then it shows the, the kids having incest? Let's get to the funniest kill of this whole movie. This whole movie, we got this old dude. And this old dude is like, is, is the nastiest looking man I think I've ever seen in my life. For some reason, there's this 15 year old girl who is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over him. And so they decide that they're going to have a little hookup session. And so she decides she wants to go take a shower, but because the showers are all filled, she has to go into the shower that is abandoned. She's in there and she's taking her shower and the killer, we get their point of view, and she presses her back against the shower shower curtain wall thing and then the killer stabs her in the back and just like slices her and all she has to do is move forward and she would stop being hurt but instead she just stands there and allows the killer to play operation with her back <laughs> And then, <laughs> then this scene happens, <laughs> like 20 minutes later. <laughs> oh my god, that's too bad. So Judy, who's been this bitch the whole movie, for some reason, she's just in the room and she was having sex with this dude. And so the dude leaves because he gets scared. And so the killer comes and, and I shit you not, kills Judy with the hair straightener up the vagina. So that was fun. And then we get Angela and Paul. They go on this little date finally after Paul kissed her the other day and she like freaked out, right? And so they go and Angela and him are there and they're after all this this killer has gone around and like killed everybody and everything and after the reveal it's kind of weird because you start to think well how was the killer in two places at once but you know logic is not in this movie what happens is they stumble upon angela and our boy paul and we go back to meet our favorite auntie and she explains that Angela is not actually Angela. I know y'all, I know. Angela's actually the guy, not the girl that survived <laughs> the movie ends. I can't show this on YouTube, so I just gotta say it. The movie ends with Angela screaming. How can it be? Paul's head on the floor in a small, tiny, Penis. And that's Sleepaway Camp, y'all. Look, you need to watch it. I think that we we just don't get movies like this anymore and we need to talk about them and we really need to put more money into the arts because when we do, we get things like this. We get things like this and I think this movie can teach us so much more because so many of us may think and procrastinate and sit here, but this guy, this guy's mother was a doer, and I think that showed clearly in this movie. Please, in the comments down below, tell me what you think about Sleepaway Camp if you've seen the movie. Also, what's your favorite bad movie? Please, put it in the comments down below and I'll watch it, and I'll make a video on it. Please hit that like and subscribe if you like and subscribe to the content, and I'll see you in the next one, fam. Bye!